What's going on, everyone? My name is Priyarak Shithani. I'm an MD MBA student here at Yale University, and today I want to talk to you about the most popular fellowships in medicine. This is something that's not talked about often because people often know that they have to get into medical school, and after medical school, they're usually focused on residency. But things that people don't understand is after residency, there's actually something called a fellowship. And oftentimes, the fellowship is actually what a lot of doctors end up doing. They don't end up becoming just, you know, general uh, internist, which is what I think I want to do, but they often end up subspecializing into something like cardiology or hematology. So if you have a cardiologist, for example, that person is a fellowship trained physician because you usually have to do a fellowship in cardiology. So before we begin, let's actually discuss what a fellowship is. During fellowship training, a physician follows a specialist closely to train in a subspecialty. So what does that mean? So if you can see here, I'm putting my glasses on, within pediatrics, if you did a pediatrics residency, you can then do a fellowship in things like allergy and immunology, pediatric emergency medicine, pediatric infectious disease, and all of these are subspecializations. So if you, for example, as a pediatric uh, child, were to see a pediatric infectious disease doctor, that doctor is a fellowship trained doctor. Similarly, if you're an adult and you have a cardiologist, that cardiologist usually does three years of internal medicine training, which is right up here. And then from internal medicine, they then do a fellowship in cardiovascular disease, uh, which is another three years. So a fellowship is um, three years, usually up to three years of additional training, if not more than three years, on top of a uh, residency. And that residency, depending on your specialty, Today, we're only going to talk about pediatrics and internal medicine, but even surgical uh, specialties such as OBGYN have fellowships. So if you wanted to be a gynecologic uh, on gyne-onc is the specialty, people who work with cancers of the gynecologic tract, those individuals have to do a fellowship after they do an OBGYN residency. Today, to keep it kind of more simple, we're going to focus on pediatrics and internal medicine. We're going to talk about the most popular fellowships within pediatrics and then the most popular fellowships within internal medicine. How do you define popular? Today, we're going to define popular as the number of fellowships that have the most applicants, right? So what I'm saying is, for example, if cardiology has a thousand applicants a year and internal uh, and allergy and immunology has 500 applicants a year, in the domain that we're talking about, I would say that cardiology is more popular than allergy and immunology. That's just the definition I'm using to define the top five. Right. So with that being said, let's start with pediatrics. To do a fellowship in pediatrics, you first have to apply to a pediatrics residency. That's usually a three-year program that teaches you the general bare bones training of what it means to take care of kids. After that three years of pediatric training, if you now wanted to do a fellowship, here are the options you have. Allergy and immunology, emergency medicine, endocrinology, each of these are subspecialties that you have to do a fellowship in. So if you now want to know the most popular uh, fellowships, you actually have to think about you know the, the numbers. If you look at the diagonal, uh, the highest numbers in each of the specialties will tell you the most popular ones. So based on this image, you can see that the top five fellowships in pediatrics are actually emergency medicine, which had just last year about 311 applicants, neonatal, uh, neonatal uh, fellowship, which is usually focused on individuals who are really young, either like premature births, uh, definitely younger than one year of age, and it's all about dealing with uh, really uh, young babies who are usually born with congenital defects or congenital diseases that need uh, much more intense management. From there, you have critical care, allergy immunology, and sports medicine. Critical care is exactly what you think of when you think of someone who goes into the hospital and is in a critical condition. Maybe their blood pressure is tanking, maybe they're septic, maybe they have a fever that hasn't uh, responded to antibiotics. Those individuals who end up in critical care, that too as a pediatric patient, you know, usually below the age of 18, are taken care of by critical care physicians. And then you have allergy and immunology, which has to do a little bit more with autoimmune diseases like lupus um, that patients have, and again, usually pediatric patients, as well as sports medicine, uh, which again, uh, has to do a lot more with understanding uh, the bones and the common sports injuries that you see, um, again, in kids. So those are the top five fellowships for pediatric specialties. And that is purely based on the number of applicants who apply into those fellowships. And you can see that if you arrange them chronologically, just purely by number, emergency medicine is the most popular, and then sports medicine is the fifth most popular. Again, all pediatrics. Now let's think about internal medicine, which is the specialty I'm hoping to enter. Everyone who does internal medicine training has to do three years of general internal medicine training. You can almost think about it as like, for example, in um, 
in baking school, everyone needs to learn how to bake a cake before they start learning how to like put toppings on, right? So internal medicine is the exact same thing. Everyone needs to know how to you know do general medicine before they then subspecialize to focus entirely on the heart. So after you three years of internal medicine training, here are the different ways you can go. You can then do hospice and palliative care medicine. You can do infectious disease medicine. You can do nephrology, uh, which is the kidneys, oncology, which is purely uh, the cancers, or you can also do... Um, endocrinology, right? So there's so many different types. There's also hematology and oncology, hemonc. Um, and so there's a lot of different subspecialties and fellowships, but which ones are the top five? Top five most popular, if you look purely at numbers, first one is cardiology. Cardiology, for some reason, has always been the most popular. Part of it may just be our infatuation with the heart. Another part of it is that the, the, the specialties that tend to be a bit more popular within internal medicine tend to be procedural heavy, right? So cardiology, people can put in stents. In pulmonary and critical care, for example, has to do with a lot of like ventilator management. Right now, if anyone is on a ventilator, as we know, a lot of people around the world in ICUs are usually on ventilators because of COVID-19. They are usually taken care of by pulmonary and critical care fellows uh, and uh uh, attendings who have specialized training in that because it takes a lot to understand how to manage those and also understand what it takes to stabilize someone who can't breathe, right? That's a whole different ballgame. The third most popular one is gastroenterology. These are the individuals who usually do endoscopies. They, they can do colonoscopies. They can look inside your GI tract. These are the people who do routine uh, surveillance of the GI tract. And also, if you ever have a GI issue, such as Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, they will often manage you for that. Again, this is an internal medicine, so it's assuming you're an adult. Um, after that, you actually have hematology and oncology. Hematology is the study of blood. Uh, so if you think about things like sickle cell disease, leukemias, which are cancers of the blood cells, those are hematologists that man manage those. Oncology is the study of cancer. And there's different types of cancers. There's blood cancers like leukemia, but there's also solid cancers like liver. Liver has cancers. Kidneys can have cancers. Uh, every every now and then, brain brains can have cancers, right? So there's so many cancers in all the different organ types that oncologists are usually the ones who manage those, and they manage them through medication management and just understanding the different therapies that are out there. And last but not least, in fifth place is critical care. Critical care is somewhat similar to what I mentioned earlier. Anyone who goes into an ICU is usually taken care of by a critical care attending and fellow. And so now here's an entirely different perspective, right? Before I define popularity by the number of applicants that are applying to each of those particular fellowships, but if you want to now think about it from the other side, which is the applicant perspective, you can see that there are special subspecialties and you can now um, order them by the number of applications one applicant fills out. So what this means is, uh, first of all, this is for IMGs, international medical graduates, and the top three fellowship specialties by the average applications per applicant, per applicant. So one person who is an IMG, an international medical graduate, is applying to 113 cardiology programs. They're applying to 101 gastroenterology programs, followed by 84 hematology and oncology programs. These are all subspecialties in internal medicine, but you can then rank this out for a lot of different subspecialties, right? And you do, we're doing this purely for IMGs, but you can see that consistently over the last five years, it's always been cardiology is the most popular, followed by gastroenterology, followed by hematology and oncology. And it's been remarkably consistent. It's just that the number of programs individuals are applying to is getting higher and higher, which just goes to show you not only are those, po those specialties that are most popular uh, getting the most applicants, but each of those applicants is applying to 100 and something plus programs because that's how competitive getting into one of those specialties is. If you now want to focus on purely U.S. medical graduates and outside of international medical graduates, you can see that there's a little bit more variability. So instead, now you actually have gastroenterology. One applicant from U.S. Um, institution is applying to 67 programs. For cardiology, they're applying to 56 programs. And then you can see pain medicine. Pain medicine is a little bit different because you can get to pain medicine from a lot of different places. You could actually do internal medicine. You could do another specialty and then do a fellowship in pain medicine. So what that means is there's that's why it's multidisciplinary. You can get to that sub-specialization training from a lot of different places. Similarly, you can see that last year, gynecologic oncology, which is gynonc, it's a subspecialty of obstetrics and gynecology. And you can see within U.S. individuals, that was actually the third most popular subspecialty uh, in terms of the number of applications one applicant is filling out. And similarly, two years ago in 2019, vascular surgery, which is a subspecialty of general surgery, so you do general surgery training and then do vascular after that, um, one person was applying to 43 programs. So 
all that to say, there's so many different sides to these things, and I want to make sure everyone understands the limitations of the way I'm presenting this data. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of people interested in each of these specialties. We initially first approached it by the purely number of applicants each of these fellowships got, uh, both in pediatrics and in internal medicine. But if you then take, think about it from the applicant side, the applicants themselves have to apply to a lot more places when those institutions, when those fellowships are a little bit more competitive. Um, the links to all of this data is obviously going to be linked in the description below, so feel free to check it out. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, drop a like. Comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.